All right, I've wanted to do this for a while, and I think I've done a video sort of like it about slow reading and the benefits of that. The reason why I, I got this idea for now is there was recently a, a Philip Chase video. Let me just make sure I get the right title of it. The best of fantasy top 10 authors who stun you with their prose. Now, as I go through that list, um, sometimes with some of those authors that he brought up, Sometimes people will find their their prose to be, or their books to be slow. And as I've come into the, the, the fantasy world, I will more and more see reviews about books that are slow. Now, I come from the world of, you know, my favorite books in the world are from the 1800s. And people don't touch those with a 12-foot pole because they are they are notoriously slow now i'm going to make a case as best as i can for slow books and you know i'm not exactly totally sure why why they get deemed that way i don't know if it's because there is not enough action or if things maybe are too repetitive or we spend too long with dialogue or they're overly descriptive i think maybe a lot of those things could contribute to it um but some of those things are my <laughs> my favorite things when i'm reading i've compiled a list of uh, authors i have their books here or some of their books one of their books for most of them uh, of about 15 or so last time i checked and about 10 or 11 benefits that that i find for for reading books that could be considered slow. Now, they don't have to be slow books, but I find that often books carry a certain quality to them that some of these other types of books maybe don't. Now, it might come across a little bit, uh, you know, I don't know how it's going to come across. I don't want to make it seem like I'm bashing people who find books books slow and plodding and boring because I certainly agree with some of these books. There are a lot of these books where I, I just had to push through and really by the end of it, I, I was totally happy that I did so. But, you know, some of these books, uh, not the ones I'll mention here, but some books that I, I would also consider slow, but maybe for different reasons. Um, if I, I would much rather have three chapters, for example of a, a master apprentice sort of, uh, you know, dialogue and scenes going forward in that regard over three chapters of a, of a siege. Like I get totally bored with that sort of thing. And I would much rather, I'd find much more richness in, in the dialogue within, again, a master and apprentice. Now, just going through first uh, and why this came up, I, I just picked up Tad Williams' The Dragonbone Chair. Uh, big reason for that, it, it seems like it's making a resurgence in a lot of ways. And and Tad Williams is kind of notorious for being, uh, you know, people say that he has slow books. And I haven't read any of his books. Now I am on chapter three and I, I am totally, I'm totally like it's totally grabbed my attention so i don't know if if it will come later where it's slow but i like the sort of thing where there's lots of you know development and i'll i'll go through some of that so the first thing that i think in my opinion uh is slow books sometimes capture is it enhances or or it kind of requires enhanced focus and concentration. Now, in in a lot of books that I read and, and books that I love, I don't always love, like I, I wouldn't just only read these kinds of books, but in a lot of books when there's lots of action and things, I can read it through it very, very quickly. And, you know, I, I'm glancing down and, oh yeah, he's just he's just bashed someone in the head. Okay, we're going down, 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 down. He's just, you know, they're, they're having this siege or it's changed to this wizard. He's doing fireballs. And I kind of find that boring if I'm just reading through it at the same pace where I would read some of the dialogue. And I'm kind of notorious for, you know, well, not notorious, but like in my mind, 
as soon as it gets to an action sequence, I think, okay, time to fly through a lot of this and just kind of get the details because it's not usually the main thing that I'm into. And so these slow portions, uh, Toll the Hounds in Malazan is kind of the, the first two thirds is said to be very, very slow. And that was some of my favorite stuff because a lot of the things in the series up to that point, and I might as well bring it up. All right, he'll be in, you know, I'll, I'll just mention this. I don't think Steven Erickson is a slow writer, but in Toll the Hounds, the eighth book, uh, the first, again, the first two thirds, people say it's it's very, very slow and plodding and you know, there was all this action and, and great development and back and forth. And at this point, we find a lot of lows for a lot of the characters. And, um, you know, uh, uh, plot-wise, on, on a piece of paper, perhaps you could say that a not, not a lot happens. But the reason why that book is my favorite in the series of 10 is because uh, I feel like I get a view of the characters in a way that I don't get in the other in the other ways. Of course, I see them on the battlefield and I see them uh, with their witty banter and things in, in all the books. And there are hard moments in these books uh, where you get to know them very well. But uh, just the pacing uh, and, and the way that it was, you know, just yeah, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go too far into that because this is a big old list, and I'm already going on tangents. Anyway, increased concentration number two uh, bleeds into that, and I was already talking about that. I feel like it it uh, it helps to get a deeper understanding of character of the characters and the themes of the book during those slow moments in a way that you don't always get in those very quick. Uh, moments. Three is I get a heightened emotional attachment both to the plot and to the characters. In books that are often considered slow, I like to see what's in their head. I like to see them in their uh, contemplative sort of moments. And uh, I think in their downtime, just in the same reason why some of my favorite Star Trek episodes might be considered the 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 ones that people might skip because they're just in like a, a bar or, a, you know, they're, they're just kind of on their off days. But those are the ones where you really get involved in seeing what's going on with, with these characters. Uh, for me, I'm already stressed out enough with work and a whole bunch of things. And sometimes these slow books just help me uh, with my own stress reduction and relaxation as we get to just kind of enjoy the journey of reading uh those and as i'm doing that it is helping my vocabulary i know my spoken vocabulary is super shoddy but uh as i've read through some of these books that are considered slow books and as it has caused me to slow down is another one that i guess i just jumped ahead but it encourages slowing down, and it, as it has encouraged me to slow down, it has helped me to really appreciate the art of of writing and to increase my own vocabulary. As it does that, it helps. Uh, those are the moments in books or in the whole books where I uh, have the most contemplation about what's going on and reflection, and that's really what I'm going for. When I read books, I, I know I, I, I want to be entertained like everyone, but my my way of most getting entertained is through those, you know, reflection of what the author really is trying to to say more than more than a really tight plot necessarily. There are there are some books that don't really have, a, a, you know, I, I'm not I'm not huge into epics, even though Malazan is becoming my favorite series ever and it's as epic as epic is uh, but the reason I love it so much is because it also is a very careful character study in in a lot of ways but I like to sit with the characters and reflect with them uh, I I get more out of the books where I slow down and again all these things that I've mentioned before it has a longer lasting 
enjoyment in my mind than uh, the ones where I'm just kind of peeling through it in in a few days. I like I like getting a book like this, like the Dragon Bone Chair. I already know this is not going to be one where I'm going to want to go too quickly through it. And I love I love enjoying the slowdown with the books. I know that so often as readers we get kind of, you know, as soon as we open a book, we're already counting down the days it'll take us or the hours it'll take us before we can get to the next book so we can get like a check bar a check mark off the list. Um, I just go crazy reading that way, uh, even though, you know, there's a million books. Some of these I've read, a lot of these I haven't, and uh, I want to read all of them, but if I just rip through it, I'm not going to, I'm not going to enjoy it or, or get out of it nearly what I, what I could. I'd rather read 10 books really well than 100 books just flying through to understand what the plot is so I can, you know, I could go to a Wikipedia page and just get the summaries and get just as much if I'm going to rip through it that quickly. Uh, again, it encourages slowing down in some of these these slow books. And I think people should slow down anyway. Uh, authors sure put a lot into the craft of their books. And the, the authors that Philip Chase brought up, um, I can't imagine rushing through their books because of how beautiful their the writing is and their sentence structure and the themes. And that's why I try not to read things with audiobook because I just lose some of that. Uh, it, I Again, I think it promotes active reading and as active as we can get with books, I think the better. That's why I, I love the books that I that I generally love because I get invested in, in actively reading them and not necessarily just having it fed into me that's why I loved Malazan so much because you had to put you had to put work into it and I got out of it as much as I put into it and man I could have put even more in and that's why I'm doing a reread now and uh, just in general but also with slow books I think they promote quality over over quantity now here are my some of my favorite authors uh, that I think people could really love now i'm not going to do the whole brian lee durfee thing where i like chuck these books everywhere and like you know I, I, he takes great care of his books but after some of these videos it's like oh okay so tad williams again i've only read like 30 pages of it but so far i can i can tell it's probably going to be on the list because of how much i've enjoyed it and uh, we'll see. So I'm going to kind of go current and go back in time. Now, I'm going to bring up a, a couple authors that I haven't read yet uh, because I've been so out of, you know, I've, I haven't been reading fantasy for super long. I, I read it a tiny bit in high school, like a couple books and Harry Potter and things, but it's only been like the last few years where I've been doing that a bit. So Patrick Rothfuss, probably the biggest name that I haven't read, uh, mostly because I didn't want to start until I knew maybe the third book was coming out. But I, I'm, I'm sure I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and and do it anyway. Uh, notorious for having slow paced writing, but people love it, right? You get out of it what you put into it. And then uh, Guy Gavriel K is another one where I, where I haven't. You know, I, I haven't read any of his stuff. Ursula Le Guin, or Kay Le Guin, fantastic writer. Again, I would feel so bad just rushing through these books uh, of hers, especially with how much work she puts into the prose. Same goes for uh, my next one, Robin Hobb. I've only read the first book, and I can already tell I'm going to love the rest of the series. I could just sit with Fitz. And just watch him try to hammer a stinking nail, or, or you know, hunt a, a silly badger, or something. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's in the other books, but I just love sitting there with him and 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 reading what's in his head, and I, I just love it. I just love it. Now, the Way of Kings, I've only read uh, out of Brandon Sanderson. I wouldn't say they are slow books, and I wouldn't say they're overly impressive prose, but. Um, the world building is is super fun and and I've read the first two books of the Stormlight Archive 
And a lot of people say when you get into it, you have to kind of push through the first 500 pages and then it just sort of takes off or even like the first 800 pages. I loved the first 800 pages. That's where all the character development was. And I love this one so much more than the second book. Uh, after the second book, I, I bowed out of the series. I'm eventually going to get back into it, but I um, thought the slow parts were actually the best parts in, in The Way of Kings. Uh, let's go back in time a little bit further. We have J.R.R. Tolkien. Again, if you're just going to rush through it for the plot, I think, I think you're going to miss out on some of the best stuff that uh, is within the DNA of his, his works. And he has a whole bunch of these side things as well, published by his son, I think. Christopher Tolkien is his son. And really, you get out of Tolkien what you're willing to put in. And, and to, but he's a little bit wordy, and it can even, you know, even I'm reading through The Hobbit, and I think, man, this is, man, this is slow, because it's just not as, not as exciting as some of his other stuff. Now, there's a reason why I have more copies of this than any other book, and I only have three of them in my hand here, but that is Bram, Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, one of my favorite books of all time. And again, notorious for being very slow because you spend like 40 pages of a guy, uh, you know, losing some blood, and it just keeps going back in these journals to to Lucy and Mina and he, you know it's just kind of slow that way but I love it uh let's go to the Brontes Wuthering Heights one of my favorite books of all time which I think everybody should read and Jane Eyre uh going to let's go to a couple couple very well-known Russian authors actually this one's not a Russian author I'll put that there we have books from Tolstoy. We have Anna Karenina and War and Peace. Now, notorious for being slow, but also notorious for being a couple of the greatest books ever written that I think everybody should read. Uh, but I prefer Dostoevsky a little bit more, Crime and Punishment, uh, and uh, The Brothers Karamazov, a couple of the greatest books on top lists uh, ever now if it's just not your thing it's not your thing but I really think with all of these books you just get out of it what you're willing to put in you, that's not a book to just check off uh, you have to really w be going into it trying to get something out of it not looking to the next book and really being willing to slow down and 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 enjoy it for the art that it is uh, last books here. I know, I know, uh, Charles Dickens isn't for everybody, even though some of the most well sold books of all time. Charles Dickens isn't necessarily my favorite of, of the authors from that era, but I certainly appreciate the, some of his books that, uh, that I've read. We have Moby Dick notorious for being this long plotting book and it's not even that long though like this one here it's only 650 books and people are reading fantasy books that you know series of fantasy books that are 800 900 thousand plus pages long now i think the reason why it's slow is because so much of the book is within this man's head and but it is it is for that reason in a lot of ways where it is a top top 10 book easily for me of all time and i think people should i pe i think people should read it even though they're into fantasy or other things i think just for the sake of i mean you could just check it off the list but i think if you really slow down and want to enjoy it and uh are not trying to look forward all the time i think you could really enjoy it uh, we have Victor Hugo, and I think I, I think I forgot to bring Les Mis, another one, but I have Hunchback of Notre Dame here. Uh, and then I'll, I'll just write my favorite 
I just added my favorite book of all time. I, th I think it's my favorite book of all time. I wouldn't call it slow, even though it's super long. Um, but it is uh, Alexander Dumas, The Count of Monte Cristo. Beefy book, my favorite book. People might call it slow, but I think it's the greatest revenge story ever. And just the development over how long is this you know this is a thousand plus pages this translation here 1000 uh 1082 1082 pages and if this would have been a, a 300 page book you could have gone through the plot but man it wouldn't have just simmered the the way things ought to simmer and by the time you get to the end of it, it's like you've been on this great adventure. And you just don't get that if you if you rip through it. it. You know, some people can read very quickly. At least I wouldn't have been able to to feel the way about the characters where uh, that I think the author intends for us to feel if we just don't put in that uh, slow effort with this book that some people call slow. So... Anyway, what do you guys think? I, I certainly sounded pretentious today, didn't I? Uh, it's, it's not my, it wasn't my intent, but I do want to, you know, I've enjoyed being in other people's world with fantasy. And uh, I, I do want to put in, you know, I want to I wanna go to bat for some of these slow authors whether they are in fantasy or some of the classics and and just invite people to to branch out and and give them a shot and you know I don't mention it on this channel a lot I don't think but my mission statement if I would have had a mission statement would be that quality over quantity sort of thing and, and encouraging people to just slow down and and enjoy reading I think I think we, we get a little bit wrapped up in how many books we read, and that's fine if, if, if that's the way you want to do it, but um, I think, it, I think it, it stresses me out when, when I try to do it that way. So anyway, I will talk to you guys soon.